Hello there and welcome to the Joy News channel. Of course, um, it's our COVID-19 special. And prior to the COVID season, I would say that the Noguchi Memorial Institute was not as busy as it is now. As I speak, I can count about four vans, a pickup vans, from the various sectors held directorates across the country, mostly the southern sector, I should say. We know that currently uh, there's a contact tracing ongoing, massive testing in Ghana, making sure that we go after the COVID virus, and that's what is happening. So I am currently here at the Noguchi Memorial Institute. Currently, there's a sorting ongoing. I'll take you through the processes shortly. But I have with me a special guest. Um, today, he's not, she's not talking politics. Uh, Susan Edouard-Mankwa, she's head here. Uh, taking, making sure that everything is sorted out properly. Welcome to Joy News. Thank you. And uh, like I said, today we are not talking politics. We are talking COVID-19. Yes. What exactly do you do here? Okay, so um, this is the sample receipt area. Um, initially, we have a sample receipt post. But as you said, these are busy times and unusual times. Mm -hmm. But they still go through the process as it is. So when they first arrive, they stop at the security gate. Mm -hmm and then they fill out the sample receipt form. So, you know, the person bringing the sample, who they are bringing the sample to, the number of samples, and the date and the time, and the type of sample. Then when they finish with that, then they line up according to how they came in, and then we, um, they come in with their forms and their COVID samples. Then they bring the forms, so the forms are checked, um, the number of forms that they have. Then somebody else checks the number of samples that have been brought in. The number of samples and forms must tally. You must have, if you have 50 forms, you must have 50 samples. If one or the other is over or under, so let's say you have 50 samples and you have um, 49 forms, we will have to check each one to remove the sample that doesn't have a form. That's a rigorous okay. thing. Okay, that's a rigorous thing because sometimes they bring lots and lots and lots of it. Or if you have more forms than um, samples, we have to check again one against the other to remove those forms. It, it makes the process easier for the lab people. They pick a form, they know the sample is, is there and they don't have to do that in the lab and waste time. So that's what we do here. We check the forms against the samples and make sure that the forms match the samples before they go into the, the lab. Then the samples are categorized into two. Mm -hmm. You may have retesting samples or suspected samples. Those are put together because those are urgent and those are taken straight to the lab. The rest of the samples that are contact tracing are then sent to the cold room. Mm -hmm. And we have somebody also in the cold room who receives the sample in the cold room and then notes the samples that have come into the cold room. If they are being issued out, then they also note that they are being issued out. And it's the same with the lab. The, the samples that go to the lab are received okay. and noted, and then um, they, they work on it. So they also have their sample receipt book up in the lab. So basically, that's what we do here. Mm. It's, it's almost 7 p.m., like I said, and already I've counted the number of pickups that have come in with these samples and the sorting. It almost looks like an electoral process ongoing, but that's the side. We'll take a look at it later. But about how many vans then are you expecting in terms of samples that will come from the various sectors or health directorates? Um, we have the regulars, and mm -hmm. then we have the one-offs that okay. come. I mean, the regulars would be the gas South, Ghana North, Adenta, Ayawasu, all the Ayawasus, the West, the mm. this thing, Ablekuma, all the Ablekumas, which are by way, mm. um, 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 what do you call it? So, the whole, all of the Greater Accra, Adan West, Tema, mm. Adan West, Adan East, all that. And then we do have um, samples coming in from um, Upper West mm. also. Um, in, in Well, yesterday we had extremely large, this thing. Then we have the one offs that come up from the Eastern region. You know, Eastern region now, um, they don't come on a daily basis, but they do come in, you know, from the Eastern region, from the Volta region. Um, but Greater Accra, they on a daily basis come in large numbers. Okay, I'll leave you uh, to do the sorting, of course. Uh, we'll get into the lab, then we'll know how the whole process goes. And um, you're expecting more, aren't you? Yes, definitely. I mean, we are here, um, we are running a 24 hour. But the samples do usually by 10, 11. Mm -hmm. uh, you get people who wander in at 12, but usually um, by 10, 11, most people have arrived and we've checked them up. If they come and they have problems, they have to sort the problems up. Mm -hmm. So sometimes some of them spend a couple of hours because you have to match. And so if you came with 200 samples, 
you have to match them to ensure that everything is um, is on point. But generally, yeah, 11, okay. we are done and most people have left. Oh, okay. So um, how many three, how many shifts in all then uh, do we run? Because you run um, 24 for, hours. Yeah, okay. For the sample receipt, like I said, okay. generally by 12 midnight. But so then the, there's somebody also in the lab that is then assigned to receive it. And then our security um, persons are also assigned, um, trained to receive samples okay. and store them in the cold um, just in case they come around 1 a.m. to a, But 24 hours, there's always somebody okay. who will pick it, who will pick a sample up here. So this is how Gasal have presented their samples. So it's easy to, to, to count and then to, to check. You know, if there's a mistake, you can always e see okay. their name and... Ex I see labeling. What does it contain? So these are sputum samples, okay. uh -huh. okay. and then they have the names and the numbers, their EPID numbers. So it's easy to check. But I can also show you. Yeah, please do. Please do. We'll be glad to know. <laughs> I can also show you the way. Mm -hmm. you, you see that these are individually packed. Yes. Okay. okay. So they've individually packed them in 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 um, poly things um, or Ziploc bags. That makes it difficult. That, that makes it a little difficult, but. Um, the, the, the different ways, and then they have the, the those who are coming with the swaps. But basically, these are the two so different this ways. Is the but final point before no, it no, to the lab? yes, before I, not to the lab. Okay. These ones are going to the cold room. Okay. And then these ones are, are labeled suspected samples. Mm -hmm. So these ones will go straight to the lab, okay. but these ones will go to the cold room. So clinical cases and suspected cases are sent straight to the lab. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. But, okay. So otherwise. Um, they are going to the cold room. The cold room. Yeah. Later. Mm -hmm. Yes, for later. Okay. Hello. I'll, ch I'll chat with the lady quickly. Hi. Yes, quickly. Please speak my eyes. I should. I should. My your eyes. Okay. Hello. I see. Welcome. You, you can have this. So, uh, wh which district are you coming from? From Ewutu Senior East. Ewutu Senior East. Um, so, what's currently happening? Uh, yeah. These are our surveillance samples we brought. And uh, you are now doing the sorting. We are sorting out. How come? Uh, How come? We realized that we have more sample uh, forms than the samples. Okay. So we are now cross-checking to see that uh, what is in the case based form correspond with the samples that we got. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And um, you are hoping that you'll be done in a bit. How tedious is the process? It's uh, very difficult. Very difficult. Job. Did, did you get a mix up along the line? Because usually you would have done the sorting before coming in. Uh, we, what happened we, along we the line? We did the sorting all right. Mm -hmm. But when we got here, I realized that we were still having challenges. Okay. So we now want to take our time and then we sort it out. Is it a challenge you are able to surmount? Yes. Okay. So how long do you think this will take you for you to sort out before uh, your samples are taken? Uh, roughly 30 minutes. With you. Okay. Please, may I know your name? I'm Maxwell Adobe. Okay. I wish you all the best. I Thank pray that you, you, you finish you. that uh, shortly. Yeah. Interact with uh, the Gas South, which is uh, supposed to be the Wejagbawe constituency. They have the largest numbers, and uh, earlier you saw that they had a proper sorting of their system and they uh, were uh, recommending. Hello, uh, the team is here uh, with me. Welcome to Joy News. Thank you. May I know your name? I'm Teresa. Teresa, yeah. Teresa, you're coming from the Wejagbawe uh, uh, Gas South, South, I should yes. say. So you did a proper sorting. How did you come up uh, with uh, the system that you put in place? Uh, when we were starting the contact tracing, we, we mixed the number, so we, we find it difficult to locate the name and the paid number. Too. So we came with the suggestion that we use a zip lock. Okay. So we, we do it according to the paid numbers, and we write the person's name, so it's easy to identify the person. It's easy to identify. So how long does it take you for instance? It's very simple. It's very simple. And I'm sure you recommend that other uh, yes, districts Yes, I also recommend take it, it to every other district that they should pack it according to ours. It makes the work more easier. Mm. Yeah. May I know the name of your district director? Gasout Health Directorate. Mm -hmm. May I know his name or her name? Uh, Dr. Abena Oku. Okay. And also Mr. Jones Ahenim. Okay. Yes. Mostly, it's always the ladies that we are the leaders will have them. And I, I have your members of your team. Yes, yeah, my and the transporters. Yes, our driver, Mr. Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul. And our guest. We would love to interact with you, Mr. Paul. You are the driver. You bring in all the uh, the samples. May I quickly interact with you? And uh, you know, bringing in or transporting samples like this, are you not afraid? 
Not really. You're not afraid. Not really. You're not afraid. Yes. Not really. Not really. So how, really. how does it feel knowing that yeah. how many times have you transported samples here uh, to the Noguchi Memorial Institute? Almost every day. Almost every day. Every day. How yeah, many yeah, trips do you have to do? Uh, you mean for yeah, something for to do? The number of times that you said every day. Yeah, you almost come. every day. So I have to come. Times to, do you uh, come? One trip. One trip a yeah, day. Per trip per okay, day. but do you know how many samples you carry? How many delicate samples you carry to the Noguchi Memorial Institute? Today I carry about 91 or so. 91, 91. you brought about 91 samples. Brought about 91. Oh, okay. So do you go with them when they are taking the samples as yes, well? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. I do. Well, but when you go home, for instance, how does your family uh, react to the fact that you've been carrying samples to the Noguchi Memorial Institute for the testing? They, they, they thought it's normal. Once the disease has come, we have nothing to. Too, so it's a risky job, you have to bait, you know? Yeah. So when you go so, home, for instance, what processes do you go through before, say, your family? Have, you have a wife and children? Yes, I have a wife and how children. Many, how many children do you have? Two boys, yeah. So Two they know boys. this is the way? Yeah, they know the way and, that and I do so. how do you feel about it? Well, they are okay with it. They know that's my job, so mm -hmm. they are okay with it. So when I reach home, I just shower, I remove my teeth and shower. That is all. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. okay. Mr. Hall, we wish you all the best and thank you for transporting the samples. So we've just interacted with those who transport uh, the samples here and um, earlier uh, you've seen that Madame Suzanne Edouard Mankwa uh, is one of the lead persons here. It would also interest you to know that it's not just ordinary technicians that are uh, taking the samples and taking it through the proper processes. Let's go through uh, the first desk after uh, the sorting. You see that uh, there's, there are two gentlemen here uh, who are more like the electoral officers at the Noguchi Memorial Institute at this point trying to sort out all the documents that come in. And I'll let them introduce themselves to you. You would know why I want them to introduce themselves to us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Please, uh, your name? My name is Daniel Kujo Ahenfo. Uh, Dr. Daniel Kujo Ahenfo. So well, you know, um, I am here to assist with the receipt of the samples. And uh, I shouldn't be sitting here under normal circumstances. But um, sometimes if you pass through here and you see the number of uh, facilities that are waiting to deliver samples. Um, it's very pathetic in the sense that you could wait for two hours just to uh, submit a sample. So uh, for, the, for those people that are bringing the samples, you see this is the end of a very stressful day for them. And so you want to help to make it as easy as possible for them to submit the samples and then go away. Uh, but you see, again, I'm also concerned about our, our reputation. So that's why I'm sitting here, to just make sure that things are going on well and, and that everybody goes very home, very happy. I mean, sometimes they come with all sorts of problems. Sometimes the samples don't match with the papers. Sometimes they have mixed things up. Um, and, and sometimes you need to actually let them know that they are wrong. But if you just leave it to anybody to do it, they probably will be get offended. So sometimes we actually find a way of telling them nicely, reprimanding them, uh, they take them kindly, and over the period, you see that um, the way they package and present the samples have improved, and they got, they, I'm sure uh, they go away very happy. So no matter, and, and the samples come as long as after 12 midnight. Yeah, so, and, and especially again at this time, you know, you won't get the young ones to be sitting here doing this. So that's why we sacrifice to help with this. So I see that um, you have a maca, uh, for instance, uh, together with the sheets and envelopes. So what you do is um, maybe you take us through it. Basically, they are checking the samples there. So what we do is we check the papers and then we make the necessary recording uh, at the back of the envelope. And then when they finish counting the samples, they will cross-check with us if it's correct before they put the two things together and then send them up, uh, inside. And so when it goes inside, uh, I'm sure Susan probably must have told you, when they take a sample, it has to have the accompanying papers. And because we have checked these things, again, it, it helps to move the work as fast as possible. Because we've checked them already, all they have to do is now to pick a paper and then take the sample and then take it through the necessary processes 
till when they are done, and then when they are done, they just come to the paper, back to the paper and record the, the, the results of the test. It looks like most of the work is done uh, from here. Let's see your other electoral commissioner <laughs> at this table. Uh, hello, good evening, sir. Good evening, and uh, I'm uh, Professor Colin Saholu. And the professor sitting at the table at this point with the marker as well, how come? Just as Dr. Hinfo has said, we are here just to help to bring some sanity into the receipt point because this is the point where people can come and the place will be jammed and uh, we need a senior person to control the place so that when you instruct everybody here they can listen to you they will come down and then wait patiently for their turn so in order to avoid the rush here and the people crossing each other we are here to bring discipline and also like he said, our reputation is at stake. A lot of things are being said about the institute. So we, the senior people have to be here to make sure that things are done right so that we can make, come out of COVID-19 with our reputation intact. What is going on? What is happening? We are keeping on celebrating uh, the senior officials uh, that are here at the front line ensuring that all the work is done properly and the sorting and ensuring that uh, there's sufficient work that's done. I have one more fine gentleman here with me. Good evening. You want to introduce yourself to me, sir? Good evening. I'm Dr. Samuel Ajay, um, a staff of this institute and uh, currently part of this COVID-19 work. And um, so as you see, we receive samples. And then we also take data, count the number of samples that are received every day. And um, for this week, we've received about average of 2,300 samples just for this week. Previously, it was close to 4,000 samples a week. Okay. And then currently, we also received samples by, by a drone. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, so how many? A drop point out there where the samples are dropped and then we pick and count. And are, you pick, um, are you going to get uh, drone samples tonight oh, yeah. so that you take me? We, <laughs> okay. we got one this this afternoon. From where? From Chibi. Yeah, from Chibi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, for the drones, you don't get as many of them. Um, how many drones you get for a week? Five? Four samples. Four samples. Yeah. Yeah. Because it has weight limitation. It can take up to 1.7 kilos. How tedious is the work here, of course, sorting and sampling 2,000 per week and all and more, 4,000 previously. How tedious is it? It's, it's been very tedious, but then we all have to work to help our country, you know, because it's, it's a pandemic and we are all putting in our efforts. Though we have different work that we do, but we all come together and doing our best to make sure that things move smoothly because it's tedious. The numbers are huge. Yes, but we are managing it, yeah. It appears we have all the senior personnel coming out to do the work themselves. Uh, any particular reason? Yes, because it, Im it involves a lot of um, quality checks. And there's a need for the senior personnel to be involved so that we make sure that things are done appropriately. Make sure that whatever information we turn out is, is, is the truth, yes. Indeed, uh, thankful uh, for your time and wish you all the best. Thank you. What is happening? What is going on? What is happening? So we're currently inside. Um, first, uh, we've, we've left the hustle and the bustle where all the sorting is being done. Uh, we have the privilege of getting none other than Professor Ampofu himself it's giving us a tour of uh, the laboratory. And uh, once the sorting is done, uh, what the, process, the samples go through. Uh, Professor Ampofu, we don't take it for granted at all that you're giving us uh, this okay. tour of uh, your office. How are you doing, though? Uh, I'm quite tired. I did uh, both uh, night and day today, a couple of uh, hours rest. My wife is very upset that I <laughs> spend the night away from home, but it's all good. I would be, too, if I were here, though, but uh, we thank her for allowing you to do this. But um, this week, how has it been? Today is a Friday, so we can safely say that uh, you can give us a wrap of how this week has been in terms of um, samples that have been brought in. Yeah. I mean, just this week we were, we were just um, reflecting that um, had it not been for this structure, this new building, it would have been very difficult to, you know, to process these several thousands of samples that um, we've received. So we're very grateful to the government of, of Japan, also 
uh, to the foresight of the government of Ghana, you know, for the agreement that led to this um, building. And of course, the fitting out, it was, uh, I think, close to $30 million invested by the uh, government of Japan and about a million, two million by the government of Ghana to, you know, fit it out for us uh, to start working. And it was timely because we have this COVID-19 pandemic, you know, to deal with. So if you look on the wall, you can see the basic description of, of, of the building. The ground floor where we are, okay, where uh, we have the seminar room, diagnostics lab, and then we also have upstairs, we have um, uh, more labs, okay, we have the famous biosafety level three lab that enables us to deal with infectious pathogens, and we have various laboratories for virology, bacteriology, and then downstairs we have the immunology department. Okay, so all this, uh, where exactly is the COVID-19 Okay, I, I, I think that's an excellent <laughs> question because that's where I was starting from. When we started the diagnosis for COVID, we were using our influenza team, which is based in the virology department because our institute hosts, houses the National Influenza Center. Uh, so as it is a respiratory disease, the influenza team, you know, started the initial work in the virology department. But as the samples started coming in, we increased the size of the teams and we have spread out across all the three departments, both downstairs and upstairs. And so the entire building now is being used for the COVID-19 work. That's why I, I remarked straight in the beginning that this building has really lived up to its purpose for, for working with infectious uh, uh, agents. I'm sure you'll be monitoring the controversy. You've had cause to even respond to some of the issues that have been raised in terms of the capacity, the testing and the processes as to whether we are massaging figures, whether we are churning out the right figures and all that. I would first get into your mind when you hear stuff like that from the public, knowing what you do here, what happens? What goes I get very you? upset. Mm -hmm. I get very, very upset because um, the work we do is dedication and hard work and a lot of experience built up over many years. I've been working in this University of Ghana for, for half of my life, most of my life. You know, I, I was a student here, and then I've grown to become a professor here. So it, it, it is a big deal to me when people question the work that we do without understanding the facts. So we're very happy that you're here. You've seen the sample delivery. You've seen the sample receipt process. You've seen the painstaking effort to ensure that the samples are received properly because that is the beginning of the testing process, okay? So you heard um, the average number of samples we received this week is about 2,300. Uh, yesterday, we actually received over 3,000 samples and all this is the start of the thing. So if we had 2,000 approximately per day, this, today is Friday, that's 10,000 samples. So how can somebody doubt that we have processed 68,000 samples within this period. I think when we did an uh, estimate earlier on uh, uh, yesterday, we were close to 86,000, you know, for both KCCR and for Noguchi. So um, you will see for yourself uh, the process. I think it's going to be educative for you to see that it's not the number of tests per day, but it's a capacity to process the samples as they come in. So depending on the volume of work and depending on the number of people we have at post, we can go up to 3,000 samples, we can do as low as 1,000 samples. So it depends on the way the work stream flows. But we have, um, at the peak we had over 150 people working in three groups, so working 24 seven. Sample reception would close around 11 p.m. One person will still be dedicated, but then as you will see in the labs that we are going, we had teams working all night and all day. Well, um, can you blame uh, the public sometimes when they raise these concerns? Um, I know it, it gets you upset, but um, you can't blame them too much also that um, the concern is that the process that you're using, for instance, you talked about the pooling system that you, you've had to use. We've heard from uh, the Nigeria's head of disease control, for instance, uh, Dr. Ezekiwe, exactly, raising concerns about the process no, that Ghana is using. About okay. about, about, about the process. Mm -hmm. He explained that they have adopted a different approach. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about concerns. He, I think he raised issues about the limitations he that about Ghana's the limitations mm -hmm. of the method. Mm -hmm. In therefore, they have chosen a different approach. Mm -hmm. You will see when we go to the lab. That's the reason I jumped in. Is that it's you see sometimes the phrase that is adopted is not appropriate to the circumstances. What he said was that I think 
people were saying that in Ghana they are, thousands, they are testing thousands of samples. Why aren't you doing the same? Then he said, we have taken a different approach because of the limitations. The approach we have adopted here has nothing to do with another country's situation. We looked at our capacity, we looked at our resources, and we looked at our techniques, which we have been using over the past couple of years for avian influenza, and we've modified that to use for COVID. So it's not about the pooling, it's about the ability to adopt the appropriate strategy for the public health surveillance that is required. When it comes to normal surveillance, we don't pool the samples, we do them individually because in the time frame that we're operating, it's enough to do the samples one by one. In this particular contact tracing, to try and identify the positive individual and isolate the person, we adopted the strategy that we thought would work fastest in order to identify somebody who was positive. And when we go up to the lab, I'll show you the protocols that we have adopted to ensure that the system that we have taken up is sensitive enough. Sensitive meaning we are able to detect a true positive and also it is specific enough, meaning that we are able to rule out, a, identify and determine a true negative. Yeah. So this is a system that, um, given the opportunity, Nubuchi will stand by in, in terms of um, adopting such a process, uh, just for the education of the public. Of course, I mean, we would not do something that we feel that's not appropriate. That's, that's it. And, and um, of course, we will share our scientific uh, 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 reports. We will publish this. It will be peer reviewed by other scientists. And I think the, um, <laughs> the way that we have worked will, will stand the test of time. But I hope these don't discourage you too much, do they? Uh, not exactly, but um, I think that as we explain what we do, people should appreciate the work that we do and not ascribe. The, you see, when you hear the word massage, it's very offensive because um, as scientists, you know, integrity is a major value that we hold dearly. Uh, and so <laughs> what will we get by changing figures? We produce the, res the data and the data is shared with appropriate authorities. This is the Ghana Health Service, the Ministry of Health, and they use it to inform the intervention. So why would they do anything that would not enable them to, to deal more effectively with the uh, a response which is really key to you know the public health of everybody in Ghana and also our neighbors so um, I, I think that we will do our best in the circumstances and we would rather hope that we would be appreciated instead of being vilified by some people I don't know for whatever purposes they they, they, they seem to ad take delight in in, 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 in in criticizing negatively the work that we do but we, we, we are encouraged and we will continue our work.